Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about a sixth grade homeschool curriculum for my son, Jericho. So let's just get right into it. We're gonna start with language arts. This is from The Good and the Beautiful. We love their language arts program. So this has been redone since my daughters have done it. And so he's in sixth grade, but we started, we didn't start where they're, um, the level matched their grade. So he's going to be completing level five in their language arts. And so this has been redone since. Um, I, from just flipping through it, I really, really like it. It looks more colorful. I thought it was fine before they redid it too, but, um, so there's a shared reader that they need, which looked the same. So I went ahead and just kept this one from the girls. And then it used to have a personal reader. I don't think that's part of it, but I kept it because I can have him do this when he has to read for... 20 minutes and he runs out of books but then this actually came with a book set so it has all four books in here let me pull them out so the clockmaker's son captured words the glare chico of the andes and marjorie so those are the books that he will be reading and then, which I think this part is really cool, I haven't opened it yet, but this is Watercolor Around the World, Step-by-Step -step Instructions. There's a booklet, and then it looks like 12 project templates, and I think it's actually the watercolor paper. Um, so he actually, he thinks he's no good at it, but he doesn't actually mind the art, um, like the watercolors and stuff. It's a nice break from the reading and the the book work and all that so that is level five which also comes with the geography and grammar cards and so my daughter who's in level seven will use these as well they will just share them and then we actually had uh, an old daily checklist so this is just to make sure that they do what they need to do so it has sentence dictation, letters or poetry memorization, geography or grammar cards, course book, and reading for the course reading challenge. But I believe for level five, all of the reading is integrated. I could be wrong, but I don't think there's an extra reading challenge for uh, level five. If you know, you can correct me down in the comments. So that's all of his language arts. Then he has handwriting level five. All of my kids' handwriting is not very good, so they, they need help. And none of them like it, which is probably why their handwriting's not that good. So they all need help with that. Then last, at the end of last year, I had had he and Juliet go through typing one. Um, they all know how to type, but they hadn't ever been through like a formal, like, I wasn't certain if they knew like which fingers their keys, or which keys their fingers start on and all that. And so it's very, very basic, but they both enjoyed it. They didn't mind it at all. And so I think it's, you know, it's meant for much younger kids, but my kids liked it a lot. So I went ahead and got them typing two. You know, it talks about their posture and, oh my gosh, the glare. Um, talks about their posture and um, all they basically, all they need is some sort of like word document or something like that on a computer to be able to do it. So that is typing two. That's one of his electives. Then I went ahead and got him Wordly Wise book six along with the answer key for myself. And this is just extra vocabulary. And I think extra vocabulary is always a good thing. It makes you a better reader when you know what the words mean. So it like makes you a better comprehender if you know what the words mean. So he will be doing that as well. Then for math, we are doing, we did teaching textbooks last year. Over the summer, I'm having them do CTC math. I just have them do it three days a week, 
we, my kids are like re repetition kids. And so if we didn't do any math over the whole entire summer, it would be a rough start to the fall. And I don't like that. So I'm having them try out CTC math over the summer because we ran out of lessons in teaching textbooks. And so I think we might do that for the fall. If I have a kid who just really wants to switch back to teaching textbooks, I would let them. Um, but I have paid for it for a year to be able to try it out for the summer. It's very reasonable in my opinion. So CTC math for him. Then we're going to be doing history all together with all three of my kids, which is the good and the beautiful history year two. That's what we are on. Comes with the course book. This is being redone, so I don't know if you can still get it if they're sold out or not, which I'm really excited to see how they redo it. Comes with a maps and images book. Comes with a timeline, which, <coughs> excuse me, which I had actually saved our timeline from year four, I think it was. So we still have all of our stickers on here from year four, and I love this timeline. It's just the coolest thing to me because it's stacked on top of each other, the different, um, uh, I don't even know what they're called, but different things happening in the world as time goes on and it's very cool. So it has like creation and then here's Noah and then ancient Egypt starts and just, I didn't know like all, just all the stuff on here, I literally, did not know all of this ancient stuff. So here's the new stickers that go with it. So the course just directs you to put a sticker up on there um, as you go through the course. And then here's the game. My kids like playing the game, so I always get the games. But that means I have an extra timeline. So I am going to give this away to one of you who would like this timeline. You don't have to do the curriculum. It's just a cool timeline to have. So, um, I'm going all three of my curric curriculum videos. If you, uh, this video, if you just comment down below that you would like the timeline, I'm going to do a drawing and do I, a giveaway. I will send this to someone who wins. The read alouds for this, each unit typically has a read aloud. So it's the Falcon of Eric the Red. It is the Mooring Tree, Fu and Chin. And then we had already read the book that went with this particular unit, and so I replaced it with All of a Kind Family. So that is history. Then, science. Okay, we are doing birds, which I'm very excited about. I got bird watching notebooks for the kids. I think this will be great. We have tons of birds. My parents have tons of birds at their house. And so I think we're gonna do that one first in the fall because we have more birds in the fall than we do in the winter because they all fly south for the winter, most of them do. And then the story of John Audubon is the read aloud that goes with it. I don't always do the read alouds with science because we do have a lot of other read alouds, but I remember that story being very interesting. Then we have one of their newest ones, which is paleontology, which I'm very excited about. This just looks awesome. Um, I'm, I'm excited to do this one. I think this will be a good winter one when, um, winter or spring, one of the two, early spring. So then they have a student journal that goes with it. So I got one that's for grades three and six, which will be Jericho since he's in sixth. And then one for my older daughter. And that's everything for paleontology. And then we are doing mammals for science. And I did go ahead and get a couple of the books that went with it. This just looked interesting. Can you track it? We have tons of tracks around our house because we have lots of, we have coyote, we have fox, we have lots of different um, tracks. And especially in the winter, this would be really fun to do. Um, we have a lot of snow in the winter, so this would be really fun to go to, out in the woods and try to find some tracks and identify them. And then this is Prairie Dog Town. This, um, I think this one goes with the mammals. You start getting curriculum in and then you forget what, what goes with what. Oh, and this amazing archeological digs, that goes with paleontology. So 
a little hard to keep everything straight. If you could see my bedroom right now, there's a bazillion books everywhere. Okay, that is science. I usually all, well I do always get through three units of The Good and the Beautiful Science with my younger kids. And then I do usually need a fourth, which still need to take them all through the sexual reproduction and maturation unit, which I already have. Still hoping to get that one done this summer, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Okay, something that's a little bit different that I just really wanted to do with both Jericho and Julia. So for sixth grade, I made up my own Michigan history um, little curriculum because I remember loving it and I don't think any of my kids were in public school in Michigan to be able to get the Michigan State history and I just remember loving learning about it in school and so I got a field guide to Michigan State history and I got all of these at thrift books so um, really great site I really like it uniquely Michigan the Great Book of Michigan, The Crazy History of Michigan with Amazing Random Facts and Trivia. My kids really like facts and trivia. And then I got uh, Best of the Best from Michigan Cookbook. So I just thought it would be really fun to go through and find some, like this one says Detroit Cornbread. So I just thought it would be really fun to go through and find some uniquely Michigan recipes and um, make a couple of them for their Michigan history course. That is that. Then something that I will be doing with Jericho, um, probably by himself. I might let Julia join in on this one. So this is called the Thinking Toolbox. We had done, sorry, interruption. Um, we had done the fallacy detective last year and both Julia and Jericho really liked it And so the, this is by the same authors it says 35 lessons that will build your reasoning skills So I might just take Jericho through this one, but I might because Julia is doing a logic course um, So we'll see how that works out that might be a both and then I do always like to get a new game of some sort that they can do while I'm reading out loud to them and this one's called logic links and it just it says it has puzzles and you have to use different colored chips and it gives you clues on how to you probably need to be able to see that because of the glare um you got to put the different colored chips in a puzzle pattern um but I think Jericho will really like that so that is everything. Yep, that is all of his curriculum. Now I'm going to show you some of the extra stuff that I just like to have for the kids. I read out loud a lot to them in the afternoon. I'll just, like we've done the Laura Ingalls Wilder series. Right now we are doing um, the Borrowers series. I read to them during the summer too out loud every day. So I just like to have some hands-on stuff that they can do while I'm reading. These canoodle puzzles are the best. I get these as soon as they come out with a new one. Um, they make great stocking stuffers or Easter basket fillers, but this one's Canoodle Gravity. This one is Canoodle Genius. So all the kids really like doing those. They like to do word searches sometimes because it doesn't take a lot of, you know, crosswords. They probably wouldn't be able to concentrate while they're listening to me read, but word searches they can. And then dot to dot, um, these are like the adult super teeny tiny ones. And so they like to get like a really fine tipped black marker and it makes like a really nice picture. So they like to do that. And then we've gone through all of these. So I'm just waiting for more to be made. These paint by stickers are so fun, but they're little teeny stickers that you place like this is one that Journey has done. Those are all stickers. And so you just place them. And it's just kind of a relaxing thing to do while you're listening. Then just some of the extra stuff that I like to have around. I like these answers books for kids. I go through those with the kids like right before I read out loud to them. These are new. These knowledge genius books. They're a quiz encyclopedia to boost your brain. 
and so there's just a lot of encyclopedia type stuff and you kind of like quiz yourself and then the answers are teeny tiny at the bottom here upside down so it's like self quizzing which is kind of nice but this one's knowledge genius we have earth genius and then animal genius there might even be more but those are the only three that i could find then i love all of these welcome to the museum books these do not have a christian worldview so there will be some inaccurate you know millions of years ago type stuff in there but for the most part they're pretty good like this one's talking all about spores and so if i ever need the kids to do something extra like while they're waiting for me to be done with another child i love to like i I will often pick the topic like that we're on in science or whatever and they can grab this book and I have them read the little thing and then have them like trace a picture and color it or just then they have to tell me like what was their favorite part of what they read like write down three things you learned type of thing. Um, so they're just like I'm not going to hold the whole stack up because they're gigantic but it's beautiful artwork. Beautiful pages and they're they're oversized so they're just kind of fun and i will use these like when we do mammals i'll do the animal one we can look up some more information so those are just extras that i like to use that i thought that i would share with you while i was sharing curriculum i don't think i missed anything i don't think i did but the piles are a lot so that is all of my sixth grade curriculum. I hope that you enjoyed. I will try to link whatever I can. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I'm a little bit more like Johnny on the spot over on Instagram if you DM me. So just follow me on Instagram and DM me. Um, but I do check the comments quite often. So I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.